Welcome back to your soon-to-be favorite podcast. I'm Angelica. And I'm Kelsey. And this is Here We Grow. Okay, so <clears throat> I had dinner with my neighbors a couple of nights ago, mm-hmm. and they were asking me like how the podcast was how the podcast was going, <laughs> and I told them like what our newest episode was about, which was validating your experience. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I'm not going to get into detail, but my neighbors were telling me about how their experience has been with validating their experience (laughs) people listen to the episode they know what it's about well like even like the point of of that conversation was like you know even if you're much older and it may not even affect your life today it's still worth you know bringing up your concerns to your doctor and Mm -hmm. potentially going on medicine because you never know what you never know right and like their lives have has improved Mm -hmm. since being on this medication that They really could have used their whole lives, but because they were like, oh, it's fine. Like, I'll just Mm -hmm. deal with it. And then now they're like, okay, you know, they're older. And they're like, well, let me just talk to my doctor about it and see what they say. And he's like, oh, my God, now I'm on this medication. Well, sometimes you don't know how bad you're suffering until you're not suffering anymore. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So... I know. I was telling them, I was like, do you guys ever see me, like, hesitate me leaving the house? Like, I know, I know people must see me. And they're like, no. I feel like they're just being polite. I'm like, there's no way no one sees me, like, backing in and out. (laughs) It's kind of like you always think that people are thinking about you, but, like, no one thinks about you as much as you think about you. They don't. (laughs) Especially your neighbors who have, like, a baby, like, they're. Well, it wasn't those neighbors, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, I mean, yeah. Still, still. Like, still great to have these conversations, and, like, I just love how our podcast just Opens envelops up. that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would have never had that conversation with them had it never been a topic that we talked about. Right. So, I just yeah. love it. Sometimes I'm at work, and I'll be like, oh, I'm going to go record the podcast tonight, and they'll be like, oh, what's the episode about? And I'm mm-hmm. like, cults, which glad, is today's episode. Yes, yep. we'll be talking about cults. But first and foremost, Kelsey, I have a story to tell you. Okay, go. Okay, go. Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay, so four years ago, I got my upper cartilage pierced on my ear. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this? Kind of. Okay, one of our friends did it. Steph, shout out. Four years ago? Yeah. Where? Steph, when she was a piercer. Oh, okay. <laughs> or is a piercer, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so she pierced my ear four years ago. I have accepted the fact that my body hates piercings, okay? Mm. It takes forever to heal. So for four years, I've been struggling with this piercing. Yeah. For the last two months. This is the one with the skin tag on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for the last two months, it has started to heal very nicely. So I've left it alone. because see how it feels? Very demure. But wait. Very nicely. But wait, though. Mm -hmm. I I would hinder the healing. And I know this. I I did this because. So you know, like the ring part Uh that has like an opening. I can never get it to fully close. Mm. So there's always a little bit of an opening Mm -hmm. and that part would be stuck in the middle. So I would constantly, yeah, so I'd constantly have to shift it through Mm -hmm. so that, and I would constantly be breaking skin and uh, interrupting the healing process. And I would do that probably on a weekly basis. Well, I hadn't touched it in two months because it looked really nice. Mm -hmm. And then finally the other day I was like, wait, I don't see the opening. Oh, it's healing inside. And I couldn't just leave it in Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. <clears throat> so I um I, I had to poke it through, mm. and it it didn't it didn't it it didn't come out of where it was supposed to. <gasps> you re pierced your ear. Yeah, it's like on the cartilage fold, and it does not look oh, good. Oh no! Good. I can't see your hair in the way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's not that bad. (laughs) Kelsey, is it that bad? It's bad, isn't it? It looks weird, huh? No, it just freaked me out because you said it didn't come out where it was supposed to. And that's pretty obvious when you look at it. (gasps) Really? Is it bad? I mean, I would not have noticed if you didn't tell me about it. Because you described in detail what happened. Well, because, okay, so that upper cartilage piercing, to give you like a, like a, to paint you a picture of it. Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
it's to supposed to go you a picture <laughs> it's supposed to go on the other side of where your ear folds mm-hmm. that makes sense yeah but i accidentally re-pierced it on well, the actual let fold. me see it again it almost yeah so it almost kind of looks like I it was cr- partially w- the way through and then it came up through a different like a few layers of skin somewhere else yes like it's crooked oh yeah, like it was right. supposed to come straight out, yeah, but, but it, came it came out, out like this. Yes, yeah. I, I don't know what to do now. Should I? You should probably just let it go. What do you mean? Like if you're having this much trouble with it, just take it out and let it heal. <gasps> and it be for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All this pain and suffering, sunk cost fallacy, really? <laughs> Literally, yes. That's why I haven't taken it out. <gasps> you can always get it repierced another time. I think I should take it out. I mean, if Does it's it look giving, bad, if it, if it, no, it doesn't look bad, but if it was giving me this much trouble, I wouldn't want it anymore. Well, it's been four years. What's another <laughs> sunk cost fallacy? I know. I know. But now that I've pierced it through the fold, like what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to wait to see if it heals. Well, first of all, if it heals, as soon as it's healed, as soon as it's healed, change the piercing to something yes. you can close all the way like why didn't you do that before i don't know <laughs> oh um this whole time you know you're re-injuring it well rings typically help with the healing mm-hmm. process because that's what i've done with my nose right. so i took out the stud and plus the stud was so hard to clean and just it it um it, it was like one of those small little like back pieces i don't remember oh, like a bone. really well Kind of. It was That's very weird. I, I would have to have someone else do it for me. Yeah. And I hated that. So I changed it to a ring. So is your nose ring the same way where it has an opening? Yeah. Why are you wearing this? Oh, nose yeah. Ring? I'm, I'm constantly repiercing that too, which so, okay. reminds me. I don't know where that opening is. I actually is have a ring you can have at home that looks like this one. Hold on, let me turn it around. So oh, yeah. I'm it. constantly like repiercing that too. Is this one? Not repiercing. I'm just piercing it through. Yeah. The so, skin. like, I don't know if you can see it on this one, yeah. but it has a closing oh. on it. Huh. Is mine open? Unless the paint came off of it. I should have left left that mirror in here. Yeah. Hey guys, did you know? We have merch. Merch. Like really nice and cheap merch. Really nice and cheap. Like t-shirts are like $15. Say $15. And we have magnets for $5. Mm -hmm. And stickers for $5. Yep. That's the cheapest thing on the store. We also have phone cases hoodies, mm-hmm. zip ups, do it for the matriarchy merch, mm-hmm. which those t-shirts are around 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. So go check that out. You can find it in our link tree on our Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, or if you can't find it, just message us and we'll help you. Get one for yourself, your mom, your dad, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your kids, your grandma, your grandpa, and your uncle, brother, your cousins, sister. Everybody. everybody. All right, go check it out. Okay, bye. Quarter of the week. Unhealed people hear with their triggers, not with their ears. Oof. I like that. I like that for show. One one that we should have shared earlier today when we were on the phone. Apparently you've become this horrible, evil person because you decided to no longer take their shit. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel that in my soul. Soul. My soul. All right, guys. We are talking about... (sighs) Yeah, I don't have any good ones. (laughs) We are talking about cults today. That's yep. C-U-L-T-S, not the Indianapolis Colts. Um, <laughs> go Colts. Which I guess go Colts. I don't know. I don't care about football. <laughs> which you're like, yeah, whatever. But also there's like 40 days left till basketball starts. So, anywho, I'm going to have to buy cable because fuck. Anyway. <laughs> or um, go to the games. Okay, so because they were in the semifinals last year and they did so well, Mm -hmm. tickets are higher and they're going to be on national television this year, which is you have to get a cable package for. Oh, I was going to say, I'm on the, um, hang on, I got something from the uh, Pacers. It was like, they're Pacers Insider thingy and you have like first dibs at tickets. Let's see what's open. Here we go. Going on sale soon, but when? As a pacer, until you get early access. Oh, it begins October second. So mm-hmm. I can let you know. I have the text messages, but oh. I don't know how that's different from the emails. Oh, I don't know either. Okay, but anyway. I did see that Kroger has the like magnet game roster or whatever. Oh, cute. So I'm gonna for go to Kroger free? and get that. I think so. 
free? Yeah, because it says while supplies last. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, even if it's not free, if it's $5, I'll get it. They're <laughs> partnerships, so yeah, I yeah. would assume. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. We're talking about Colts today, not the Indianapolis Colts, not the Pacers. <laughs> um, but go Pacers. Um, so... <laughs> We're just going to do a general overview of, like, what makes a cult, what why people join cults, and then I've got a few um, generalizations of some of the most infamous cults, and then the last one we're going to talk about is one that I saw a documentary on recently that I'm pretty sure Angelica doesn't know anything about, and so I'm pretty excited to tell her about that one first time hearing about it on the podcast because it's fucking wild. Really fucking wild. And also Angelica was telling me about one earlier today that we'll probably talk about too. Um, but okay, so what the cult, right? The definition online is a relatively small group of people, which it doesn't have to be a small group. Yeah, I don't know why it says that. Having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. A misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. A cult of personality surrounding the leaders. So something I think is people don't really talk about is that what makes a cult, like whether or not a group is a cult is actually subjective. Yep. There's no definitive diagnosis for what is a cult. It's also not illegal to to run a cult. Only the symptoms of what make a cult could be illegal. Right. But like you can't be arrested for running a cult basically. Which is crazy because it kind of goes hand in hand with narcissism is not illegal, but it hurts lots of people. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that when we get to the narcissism um, part or in our narcissism episode, but um, it's, it's strictly subjective. So like there's a list of like signs that you might be in a cult um, and that we're about to talk, talk about now, but a lot of cults, the members will say, like, we're not in a cult. This is not a cult. Very in denial. <laughs> very, very in denial. It's very giving, not demure. It's giving denial. Yeah, it's giving denial for sure. So here are 10 warning signs you might be in a Which cult. Which is funny because, like, for, like, what's the reasoning behind that? Like, if, obviously, running a cult is not illegal, like, what would be the consequences of them labeling themselves as a cult. You know what I True. mean? Like, why are you in such denial of it? Well, so if they're labeled as a cult, then more people won't want to join. Because and, of the bad rap, you think? Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because if they're a cult, that means that they're harmful. So they can't they can't market themselves as harmful. It's so funny because it reminds me of a conversation we just had about, like, not wanting... A person not wanting others to know about the things that they've said and done. Yeah. But it's like, that's what you've said and done. And if right. it just so happens to be bad, then that's what it is. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So signs you're in a cult. Um, first one, absolute authoritarianism without accountability. So um, you see this a lot with like people who think they know everything, prophets. Mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. And like direct line with, with God. And if they do something wrong, then they didn't actually do anything. Like there's no, they can't, they can never be blamed. Yeah. Off the hook. Yeah. Off. Yeah. Totally off the hook. Um, the next one is zero tolerance for criticism or questions. Yeah. This is the biggest one and arguably is a big proponent of unfortunately Christianity and Catholicism. Uh, Yeah. Um, and probably other, you know, mainstream religions as well. But like, if you can't question the teachings, then it, it's kind of like being a patriot means you should be able to question your government and hold them up to a high standard. Right. Um, what were we going to say? <laughs> it's basically like the leader being like, let me tell you what to think and you should not think for yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Which crosses over into narcissism, which we're going to connect to this in a, in a little bit. Um. The next one is lack of meaningful financial disclosure regarding budget. So there's no transparency with what they spend their money on. No. Most cults are for financial gain, but it could be other things, power, greed, whatever. But most of them are for financial gain. And, of course, there's no transparency with, like, what they spend their money on or where that money is going. The next one is unreasonable fears about the outside world that often involve evil conspiracies and persecutions. Yep. So othering the outside world which is a manipulation tactic to keep you in. Yeah. Like um, we're the ones that are going to be saved. 
Right. We're the ones that are prepared. Right. For the end of times or we're, whatever. We're the favored ones. Yeah, we're the, the blessed favored. ones. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Um, which, again, crosses over into some mainstream Religion. religions. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, another thing I was going to say about that was, um, oh, othering can also be found in abusive relationships where it's like, it's me and you against the world. And, oh, so weird. Keep it or, between us. Yeah, keep it between us. Or like if you know, you want to, if your friend says like, I don't think that's a good guy for you. Then the guy's like, well, they just don't want us to be together. Like, you know, othering them. Like they, they're they unhappy in their lives and that's why they don't want us to be happy. And blah, yeah. Blah, blah. <laughs> what are you laughing for? Just, so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is a belief that former followers are always wrong for leaving. And there is never a legitimate reason for anyone else to leave. Yeah. They often shun them. Yeah. If, if they were to leave or worse. Yeah. In Scientology, which we will get to, I don't know if we'll go into depth because Scientology is huge. Dude. Um, but there, I mean, there are documentaries about people like harassing people who leave or people who speak out against them, like harassing, seriously, like putting them in danger. Yeah. Um, the next one is abusive members. So that's a pretty obvious one. If they are using sleep deprivation, if they are using, if they're trying to keep you from eating. Interrogation tactics. Interrogation tactics. Um, any kind of. Verbal, mental, psychological abuse, mm-hmm, obviously mm-hmm. physical abuse. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one is rec- records, records, books, articles, or programs documenting the abuses of the leader or group. Say it again. Oh, a sign that you're Nicole <laughs> is that there are already records, books, articles, or programs documenting the abuses of the leaders or the group. Oh. So saying like, if people have come out saying that there's abuse, that's a sign that it's a cult. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. get out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next one says followers feeling they are never able to be good enough. Mm-hmm. So like moving the goalposts, like, okay, you know, you have to, you have to reach this high level of actuation and then you reach this level and then like, okay, now you have to reach another level, you know, like whatever yeah. the, the case, the standards are never good enough. Yeah. Um, a belief that the leader is right at all times. So we talked about that, not being able to question anyone. Not the leader never doing anything wrong. And then the last one says, a belief that the leader is the exclusive means of knowing truth or giving validation. That's a big one. A lot of like, so like if you say, if you walked into a Christian church right now, the beliefs would be like the sermon would be um, the preacher speaking the word from the Bible. Like the preacher doesn't claim to know it, to be all knowing, right? Only God is all knowing. Mm -hmm. But if you have someone in front of you claiming to be a prophet that is all-knowing, that's a huge red flag. How can any human be all-knowing? Right? So. Dang. It's so funny that we're talking about cults today because I just finished the um, Something Was Wrong. Me too. Of Jubilee. She was in a cult. And then two episodes of one of my favorite podcasts were about cults. Oh, wow. I think Jubilee swayed me on this topic today mm. and also at first when she was talking about it i'm like is this a really a cult mm-hmm. and then the more she talked about it, i was like oh yeah and and that's the thing it's not always apparent even to the members like yeah they may not realize it at first what's happening right and if the if the it, blah, 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 blah. if the abuse is spread out over a long period of time yes yeah, yeah, yeah or the the brainwashing is spread out over a long period of time then it's harder to notice or right. piece together mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you want to talk about, like, what kind of people get roped into cults? Um, Yeah. So, like, just straight off the dome, people who um, maybe are suicidal, are depressed, mental illness, um, people who are down on their luck. Yeah. Or, uh, like, even on the other end of the spectrum, like, people who feel separate of society. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't fit in. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Um, teenage runaways, drug yes, addicts. Te- yes, yes. Abuse yes. survivors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those, ha- those that have lost someone close to them through death or breakup. Oh, those suffering from it. insecurity or mental health issues. Oh, wait, I think I screenshotted it. And anyone who feels disconnected from society. <laughs> well, shit. Well, okay. I did screenshot it. And that's... Oh. Okay, so people who are vulnerable to cults include those who are experiencing difficult life events, have mental health issues, or feel disconnected from society. Um, some factors uh, may contribute to, for example, like life events such as a death of a loved one or a serious career blunder. Blunder? The fuck is that? <laughs> I thought you said blender. 
<laughs> terminal or chronic illness, uh, mental health, such as insecurity or abuse survivors, social isolation, such as teenage runaways or people living on their own for the first time, family issues, such as deteriorated family relations or exposure to eccentric family patterns, substance abuse, um, mm -hmm. such as proclivities proclivities toward or, or abuse of controlled substances socioeconomic conditions such as intolerable socioeconomic conditions timing such as making a judgment call based on a select information yeah. um so cults often target productive smart people who can work and donate money to the cause because as you're like learning about these cults you're like i would never do that mm -hmm. yeah you don't know what you'd do no. unless you're in that situation no um and, and they the want to steal go ahead they want to steal people's autonomy ability to have free thought and personal differences so that they can control them and bend them towards their agenda. Yeah. And the common theme amongst the people struggling with all these things that you listed is that they're all searching for guidance. Yes. Guidance. Exactly. They don't know what the next step is in their life or their loss. Or they want to know the meaning of life. They want to know the meaning of life. They want to, they want to have a purpose. Yes. Be um, a part of something bigger than themselves. And you know, they may have stumbled across a church or a religion that really would have helped them do that. Yeah. But it just so happens that they stumbled across the wrong one. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. it's and not I, their fault. Yeah. I feel like we've all been there in mm -hmm. one way or the other and so, to some degree we've all had life experiences life has you know struck us bad or whatever and just, searching for meaning yeah people just yeah. and i've said before in. i think in our um religious trauma episode that like at, at its core religion is just the way people find comfort mm -hmm. and so of course people are going to find comfort in trying to find a religious group but then they find the wrong religious group and that's yeah. where the issue lies. Yeah. Well, and the issue really lies with the religious group taking advantage of people, not people finding them. <laughs> they don't need to be existing to begin with. Yeah. But, um, so I think we've already talked about a lot of like how it crosses over with narcissism. Like the leader has a very grandiose image of themselves. Yeah. They can have sex with whoever they want, but no one else can have sex. Right. <laughs> And they think they, they're the only ones who can't do any wrong. Yeah. Direct line to di divine divinity or whatever. Yes. Um, Need for control. Yep. Yep. Um, power. They think they're so important. Yep. Good at manipulation. Yes. Charming. Charming. That's a good one. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh huh. Charming. Uh -huh, yep. Uh -huh, that charming. one. Yep. That one. So, yeah. Obviously, um, most studied infamous cult leaders are determined to be narcissistic yes um yes and and most always, of them are men i was but. gonna say i'm i'm most surprised when i learned about a cult with a female mm -hmm. leader which is the They're two that i've learned more common it's just it's crazy because statistically um there are more male narcissists than there are female narcissists so like it just it blows my mind yeah like when there's a female it just well it's and so the, the story crazy. you were telling about me about earlier today i was saying like i can't believe this woman could go to sleep at night knowing what she's done she probably think twice about I it i could believe that a man can go to sleep at night knowing what he's done but this woman like she has no empathy none okay oh lack of empathy <laughs> oh yeah that's huge another one. huge lack of empathy. huge lack of empathy but very good at faking it um also very uh like um what's the word um because especially if it's like a like a monetary thing that they're after, mm -hmm. they're very grandiose in the way that they dress and what they, oh, yeah. how they Their travel. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have to look important. Yes. To make people believe that they're important. Yes, absolutely. Um, the other cult that I was learning about, oh, was a, oh, was it? A, oh no, that was a mega church. Never mind. Oh. But that was in relation to Justin Bieber. That one's a good one. Oh yeah, I did. Um, song. Uh, yeah they have that one song it's called something song though the church bird song sing song i got it yeah look it up hill song church hill song yes, yes okay yes. glad we got that off our chest <laughs> all right so the next section i have is why isn't it illegal to run a cult um, again, we've said it's not illegal to have a cult. It would have to be like nothing about having a cult is illegal. Right. It would be the parts that the actions right. that are crimes. Right. So this says running a cult isn't, uh, it's blah, blah, blah. 
Running a cult itself isn't necessarily illegal, but it can be problematic if the activities or practices of the group violate laws. Cults, like any other group, must operate within the bounds of the law. Here are some key areas where legal issues might arise. Fraud. Mm -hmm. If a cult engages in fraudulent activities, such as misrepresenting its purpose or collecting money under false pretenses, it could face legal consequences. Mm -hmm. Or like, um, what's it called? When you get money out of people, they're being sneaky. Exploiting. Scam. Okay. Exploiting people. Scam. Scam. I think it's a scam. (laughs) Uh, The next one, abuse. If a group engages and facilitates physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, this can lead to criminal charges. Tax evasion. That's Mm -hmm. a big one that we see Mm -hmm. a lot. Cults that operate as nonprofits but use their status to avoid taxes or benefit individuals improperly could face legal scrutiny from tax authorities. Next one is violation of rights, cults that infringe upon individuals' rights, such as through coercion Mm. or involuntary confinement, could face legal action. That's a good one. And then health and safety violations. If a cult's practices endanger the health or safety of its members or others, it could run afoul of laws and regulations. Yeah, I was going to say, damn it, the thought totally (laughs) escaped me. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that so much. Oh, I was going to say many of these crimes, though, however, that happen within the cult go unreported because people are afraid. People are afraid. Yeah. People are afraid to speak against the cult. They train you to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about some of the few, some of the most infamous cults. Hang on. Known to man. Before we get into that. Okay. I have the three main personality traits of cult leaders are quoting to a cult recovery therapist. So this is in Business Insider. Okay. So we have the first one that we have here is the delusional, delusional, (laughs) the delusional martyr. So um, a delusional cult leader is the most dangerous because they can use their unyielding beliefs to convince others to buy into the delusion. So an example would be um, Heaven's Gate in San Diego, which is a cult where 39 members committed mass suicide as instructed by leader Marshall Applewhite in 1997. We'll be talking about that one. Applewhite, who previously reported having a near-death experience, was convinced a UFO would soon come to Earth and help humans leave their bodies for a higher existence. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. I have not heard that one. We've got it on this episode today, so Mm. get to it. This group-oriented delusion is a is a diagnosable condition called shared psychotic disorder. Mm. It's so, like folia do almost. Yeah, folia do. Two people or mass hysteria with multiple people. Yeah. Um, the second is the preacher turned egomaniac. So this is, happens a lot with churches, mega churches, or just religion based cults. Other cult leaders don't realize their charismatic potential at first, but once they do, they become egomaniacs. Um, This type of cult leader may start as a teacher, street preacher, or in another public speaking position. Eventually, they realize people cling into what they say, and they run with that skill. Wow. Um, They're like, ooh, I've got the power. Yeah, they realize, like, oh, people are listening to me and, like, actually come to me for advice, or they come to me whenever they need help with something, and they take my advice. So, Jim Jones would be considered one of this, which Mm -hmm. is the one that you and I talked about with the John Stone uh, massacre, which actually started here in Indianapolis. Yeah, that's our first one. Ah, oh, so cr- wild, yeah. just wild. Yep. Um, he also got people to commit uh, mass suicide. So crazy. Okay, and the third is the hard and fast narcissist, mm-hmm. um, who has been a narcissist for the majority of their life. That's how they've been since they were little. They feel ultimately entitled to completely lie to you, put you on their um, to put on this good, charming face to get you to believe what they're selling, whatever it is, whether it's God or a product or anything, really. Um. Most cult leaders are narcissists and are bottomless pit of ego need. Oh, yeah. Whatever you do is not good enough Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. they know they can get more and more and more and more. Yep. They have a constant need for members blackmail, which is like collateral to get you to obey them and their belief system. Scientology. And this therapist said, I would say most cult leaders are uh, malignant narcissists. They don't care about the damage they're causing. They don't care about the lies they're telling. And they don't care about the families they're destroying. They just need, they just need to need it. And they need to be loved and they need to be adored. They need to be feared. Wow. So when you're like, oh, how could they lie awake or how could they go to sleep knowing they've done all this? They don't care. They don't have a second thought. Not even a first thought. No. 
If anything, they avoid thinking about it. Yeah. They don't want to think about it. Right. Which is why they usually have, like, drug abuse and alcohol abuse. And Absolutely. Like yep. 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 All right. Ready to talk about Jonestown? Girl, tell me. Okay. So if you haven't heard about Jonestown, it was a cult. Um, was being the key word here. And that started off as a church. Yes. Called the People's Temple. Um, and it was started by Jim Jones in the 50s. And actually started in Indianapolis, like you said, which is insane to me to even think about. Literally insane. Whenever you think about cults, you definitely don't think about them happening in your hometown. Because, like, you just don't know anybody in a cult, so. (laughs) Well, I wonder if, like, does anyone know anyone that was maybe a child? I mean, granted, we haven't, there's not many survivors, but there were some people that did survive and they're still alive. Yeah, there's documentaries where people family members of people who died in Jonestown or who were in Jonestown and left before the massacre. Jesus. I would love to watch those documentaries. I love documentaries. Like you have access to them. I know. (laughs) I just don't have the time. You said, I would love to watch those documentaries. I would love, but I don't have time. You can if you want to. Okay. I'm gonna give you a documentary right here. So the founding Jonestown was established by the people's temple, a religious cult led by Jim Jones. The Jane, the group was founded in the 1950s in the United States initially as a ter- Christian church advocating for social justice and racial equality. So that sounds great, right? right. Like Very at first normal. glance, you're like, Oh my God, this is great. This is exactly what I believe in. I align my beliefs with you. Yep. Totally. In the early 1970s, facing increasing scrutiny and internal issues, Jones and his followers moved to Guyana, South Africa. They established a remote settlement known as Jonestown, named after Jim Jones. That is so crazy. You got all your followers to move to South Africa. Hundreds, right? Yeah. Like, crazy. Over 900 by the time the massacre. Almost 1,000 people. Literally wild. So here's an explanation of daily life and the control. Um, Jim Jones exercised extreme control over the lives of Jonestown inhabitants. He used psychological manipulation, physical punishment, and surveillance to maintain authority. I mean, they had like goons with guns, mm-hmm. like machine guns, to and that's another thing guard too. the area, but also to like control the people. Yeah, yeah. Another thing that's common with some cult leaders is paranoia. Oh yeah. And Joan Jim Jones was very, very paranoid. paranoid. And he was on drugs too. Yeah. Like I cannot even imagine like the struggle you're having with gaining control, keeping control and the constant need to like not lose your shit. Yeah. Cause if you start to crack, it's over. Yeah. Just a like, single crack. They must feel so pressured, yeah. like and they, but they're doing it to themselves, like yeah. yeah. Wow. What? Did he like squeak a toy or something? I didn't hear anything. Okay, I'm just gonna let it go then. <laughs> um, followers endure difficult. Wait. Okay. Life in Jonestown Ooh, was harsh. Followers endured difficult living conditions, including forced labor and limited resources. I remember seeing that. The community was characterized by strict discipline and a lack of personal freedoms. There were oh, children there. I was going to say another uh, characteristic of a cult is is the community, which can be very attractive to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And when they when there are kids involved, everyone becomes the parent. Yep. That's no longer your kid. That's everybody's kid. Yeah. Anyone can discipline them. Anyone yep. can treat them as such. Yep. And you almost like are desensitized to. Yeah. And that's oh, it's so bad. Yeah, it really is. Um, there were lots of kids in this situation. Could you imagine your parents like moved you to move, yeah. South Africa f- to be in a cult? Oh God! I'm sure there's survivors that were kids in the cult that made it out. Wow. That made it out. Wow. Um, Jones employed propaganda and indoctrination techniques to reinforce his authority. He portrayed himself as a uh, messianic. Messianic? Messianic. Messiah? Because I know it's Messiah is the root word, but I couldn't figure out how to pronounce it. Messianic? Messianic. Yeah, weird. Figure and used fear and paranoia to manipulate his followers. Of course, that's textbook. So the Jonestown Massacre, Massacre is a tragic and significant event in history. The date and location of the massacre occurred on November 18, 1978 in Jonestown, a remote settlement in Guyana, South Africa. The cult leader... Uh, was Jim Jones, who founded the People's Temple. He was a charismatic and controversial figure known for his extreme beliefs and control of his followers. 
Um, on the day of the massacre, over 900 people died in a mass suicide murder event. Jones orchestrated the event using a concoction of cyanide-laced grape-flavored drink. So it was like Kool-Aid. This is where the phrase drinking the Kool-Aid comes mm-hmm, from. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually Flavor-Aid, which is the generic Kool-Aid. Fun fact. <laughs> which he encouraged his followers to consume. But he himself did not consume it. I think he did. No. Oh, no. He had, someone, he had someone. He had somebody shoot him. Yeah, he had someone he shoot him. He was too fucking pussy to do it. So he wanted everyone else to do it, but he himself could not. Oh, make himself do there's it. There's actually a movie, I think, where they reenact this. Oh my god, it's crazy. I'll have to find it. I'll I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, the massacre followed a visit from the U.S. Congressman Leo Ryan, who had come to investigate reports of abuse and misconduct within the People's Temple. Ryan and several others were murdered by Jones' followers at an airstrip just before the massacre. Mm-hmm. I thought it was after, but it might be right before. Right before. Um, so because he, oh, go ahead. No, yeah, go ahead. Tell me. I was gonna say people were passing notes to the congressman saying like, Hey, I want to leave. Like, yeah. let me go back with you. Right. And he talked to Jim Jones and was like, Hey, these people want to leave. Are you okay if I take them with me? And he was like, you know what? Yeah, they can leave. Yeah. But the whole time knowing he was going to kill them anyway. Right. So as they were, yeah, going so to the So they get plane, to the airstrip, they're getting on the plane and then goons show had up with pe- guns. People shoot them. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Yep. Could you imagine, like, parents giving that Kool-Aid to their kids? I can't. It's so hard to think about. And then drinking it right after. Like, I'm not I'm not judging. Like, I, I'm not. And I wonder how just... many people. <clears throat> I, wonder, I wonder how many people were in that situation and knew it was wrong, but felt that they couldn't get out. Well, people were escaping, actually, like, physically trying to leave, and they got shot. Yeah. So, yeah, that's. And what, what, if Jim Jones I think, is going to... I think some people even, like, pretended to be dead or something, mm-hmm. or he had people walking around and make sure they were dead. Some, something. Yeah, I think I do remember that. Just, just... If I was but, a goon... I, yeah. <laughs> I would, I would... I, I don't know I what I would do in a shoot situation. Shoot Jim Jones I've never and leave. Been. Oh, yeah. Just awful. Just but, yeah, it's terrible. hard to think about what the mindset of the people with the I guns know. were, like, the guards. But they were so committed. They were committed to this cause. Yeah. Um. So they, they would have done anything, he asked. Yeah. I feel like I was going to say something else, but I forgot. Um, and, like, Jim Jones himself had multiple children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Jonestown Massacre remains one of the largest mass suicides in modern history and serves as a powerful reminder of the dangers of extreme authoritarianism and cult yep. leadership. Yeah. The, the event had a profound impact on how cults are perceived and investigated, leading to increased scrutiny of such groups and their practices. Hell yeah. I mean, that's, again, that's where the saying, um, drinking the Kool-Aid came from. It's like, it's like, if you're crazy enough to believe this, then you're drinking the Mm Kool-Aid. Well, and I mean, we talked about like, oh, well, like, why is it, why do they not want to admit that they're in a cult? It's because it's very harmful. Right. They know it's harmful and they can't market themselves as harmful because then no one will want to join and people will leave. God, it's so crazy. Okay. It's like, but that's what you are though. Like, yeah. why can't you just accept that you're not, it's because they, they truly believe that what they're doing is okay and nothing's wrong with what they're doing or what yeah. their followers are doing. They yeah. can, they, they or just, they believe in whatever the outcome is so badly. Oh like, yeah. Like ascension or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, badly yeah. that they'll take whatever the bad things are yep. to just get there. Or like if they those, can just get there, they'll be fine. Those sacrifices are worth it. Mm-hmm. 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 okay next one is scientology okay mm-hmm. we're gonna try not to do a deep dive on this if you guys want us to do a deep dive on any of the cults that we talked about today please let us know and we'll do it um i think originally we planned on doing a deep dive on each individual one but then i was like you know what let's just talk about cults in general and we'll just give some just no review some short general generalizations about them Um, Scientology is so fucking huge. There are multiple documentaries. Um, there are lots of celebrities that are or were in cults that I didn't even know, like in Scientology that I didn't even know about. Danny Masterson and his family were in it. Michael Pena is an actor. Hmm. Michael Pena, do you know what I'm talking about? No. Look it up. (laughs) Look it up because you're going to be shocked. Um, Tom Cruise is one of the most infamous ones. John Travolta. John Tav- Travolta. That's who I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. Mm. John Travolta. Um, Travolta. <laughs> I couldn't say it for like Aren't five times. Mila Kunis and uh, Ashton Kutcher? Are they? they? Or maybe yeah. they were. They aren't anymore. Oh. But 
Um, so one of the major documentaries are is Leah Remini, which was the wife on King of Queens. Um, her and a friend of hers, they escaped the cult. They were in it for a long time. Um, and they started doing a docu a docu series about them escaping and then being harassed and like how they had to escape and um Laura the, Preppen, sorry. The leader oh yeah, Laura Preppen, yeah. Lisa Marie Presley. Which oh yeah, the Presley's daughter. Me and Marie were just talking about this the other night. Elizabeth Moss. Oh, I think I knew that one. Yeah, Elizabeth Moss, who plays um on Handmaid's, the Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale, yeah. So on the documentary, she talks about, you know, having to leave and everything and like getting harassed and like people were trying to get her not to leave and like you're almost held against your will before you can leave. Um, and like all the crazy beliefs that like the or the sea org and all these things, all these intricacies, right? And then the leader of the Scientology community is um I forgot his first name, but his last name is Miss Miss Savage. Miss Savage. And his wife was, like, missing for a while. And they were, like, really pushing to get police to raid to try to find her because she was, like, not in the public eye. She wasn't, no one was hearing from her. Um, and I don't remember whatever came of that. But it's giving murder. <laughs> yeah. It's giving locked her away. <laughs> well, with Scientology is what they do is you have an initial interview mm -hmm. and you have to give them dirt about yourself. Like they yes. ask you these deep, like what's your deepest, darkest secret or yeah. what is something so bad that you've done? Like what's the worst thing you've done in your life? Yep. And they use that as blackmail against right. you. Right. And they, they get it out of you. They convince you to give it to them because they're like, if you're going to reach full yeah, self-actuation, yeah. you have to be honest with yourself. Yep. And they will even like, they will even make up things about you and make you believe that those things are true. Mm. Like you did this, right? You did this. And if, if you deny it, they're like, okay, well, you obviously don't want to reach self-actuation. Um, let's, let's give a little backstory. The Origins. Scientology was founded by L. Ron Hubbard in 1953 following the publication of his book, Dianetics, The Modern Science of Mental Health in 1950. Dianetics is, a, is considered the precursor to Scientology and outlines its basic principles. Scientology teaches that humans are essentially spiritual beings known as Thetans, Thetans, T-H-E-T-A-N-S, who are separate from their bodies and minds. The goal of Scientology is to help individuals achieve spiritual enlightenment and freedom. Um, Scientologists believe that Thetans have lived through multiple past lives and are burdened by negative experience called engrams. The practice of auditing, quote auditing, mm -hmm. is used to help individuals clear these engrams and achieve a state called clear, where they are free from the influence of past traumas. So auditing is what Angelica was just describing, where you sit down with an auditor and they basically berate you until you come up with these past Give traumas that something. may or may not have ever happened. And then they hold it over your head and they document it and they keep the, I remember yes. thinking like, wow, the documentarying or like, who's keeping, like, whose job is it to keep yeah. all these documents? Cause that's a huge job. Yeah. Especially when it started, when did I say it started? 19, <sighs> well, 1953 was, was the very beginning of it. Yeah. But like electronics, there was no electronic file keeping. There was no like, well, maybe, maybe tape recording, but that's still a lot of file keeping mm -hmm. and expensive probably. Yeah. Um, I'm by sure the they way, have a huge room with all their files. Yeah. I don't, Oh yeah. Their headquarters is in Clearwater, Florida. And you can actually go to Clearwater, Florida and like drive past the Scientology building. Mm -hmm. And you, and like there's people outside trying to recruit people. Like it's crazy. Clearwater, Florida has actually um, become kind of a dangerous town because people don't want to live in Clearwater, Florida. Like, because of the Scientology? Because of Scientology. Mm. Um, Isn't there something about money, too? Do they give money? Yes. Yeah, so to, to reach clear, which is like your highest self-actuation, freedom, whatever, um, you have to buy all these courses. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what it was. And each course is, like, thousands of God. dollars, like $5,000, $10,000. Oh and they'll, God. like, convince you to open a credit card to get it. They'll, you know, take assets or whatever to get yeah. it. Like, But they convince people that this is how you change your life. And oh they will God. actually look for people who are struggling and take advantage of that. Mm. Like, it's been proven that yeah, that is their, their tactic. Target. Yeah. Um. Um... 
Scientology has, has a structured path known as Bridge to Total Freedom, which outlines various levels of spiritual development. Each requires specific training and auditing. Now, d- this sounds great. Again, like the first outlook of some of these cults, that sounds amazing. Right. I would love to be actualized and become a better person mm-hmm. and fix myself and heal get my, to my past traumas. Yeah, that yeah. sounds amazing. But when you're using blackmail, yep. when you're providing these courses that are basically used to make people feel like shit. And you have to sell your belongings to be able to afford. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I can learn that from a free YouTube video. And uh, at some point, like, I think at first they make it very easy to get through these courses. And then at some point it becomes almost impossible to get past it. Drug addict. Yeah. So you think that you're just not doing good enough. They make you believe you're just not doing good enough, but it's actually impossible to pass them. Yeah. Yeah. They, again, move the goalpost. Yep. Um, okay. Let's see. So the headquarters is in Clearwater, Florida, but there are numerous facilities around the world. The leader right now is David Miscavige. Uh, you can remember David? No. <laughs> no. And no. I just remember Miscavige because it's such a funny name. Miscavige. Having assumed leadership in 1980s after L. Ron Hubbard's death, which is also crazy, Miscavige oversees the church's operations and intentional expansion. I don't think they talk about his death. So when they like announced his death, they were like, he's become a feat. Like he's a spiritual being now. Like it was this huge deal. Like oh, they I had bet. this huge, I can't even remember the details. Well, he of has it, to but be the remember. enlightened one. Yeah. He has to have he's made it all the way through. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, oh man. That, uh, I bet that was such a, it, like if people were having doubts, I, I bet that was like the moment that like sealed it for them. Like, yep. Nope. I'm exactly where I need to be. Yep. Scientology so has it's crazy because you would think that a leader dying would be like the end of a cult, but it's actually what fuels them even more. Yeah. Because they can Martyrs. twist the story of their of their death. And I think yeah. that's what happened. I, I don't feel like looking it up right now. Maybe I'll enter it right here in the post. But um there is something they twisted the story of his death somehow. I'm trying to remember too, but I, I don't it's not. It's like comes there's mind. some kind of weird story around that. We'll have yeah. to add that in. Yeah. Some kind of celestial yeah yeah or like the actual physical body like something about that oh interesting okay uh scientology has been the subject of numerous controversies and criticisms issues include allegations of abuse harassment of critics and aggressive legal tactics against those who speak out against the church Mm -hmm. that's a big one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so auditing a central practice in scientology is auditing which involves a one-on-one session with an auditor using an e-meter which is a made-up device, a device intended to measure changes in the body's electrical resistance. The process aims to help individuals recall and address past traumas. Scientology offers a range of courses and training programs, many of which can be expensive. Critics argue that the high cost of these services and the pressure to make financial contributions are exploitative. The church in Scientology is known for its secretive nature and strict control over its members. Critics have raised concerns about the church's practice regarding disconnection, cutting off contact with non-Scientologists, very othering, except for their celebrities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have multiple celebrities. They're still allowed to contact with non-Scientologists because they have to make money and give to Scientology and its handling of dissent with its ranks. Um, Scientology has been involved in numerous legal battles, including lawsuits against former members, journalists, and critics. The church often uses litigation as a tool to silence criticism. That's crazy because it doesn't fucking work. Everybody knows Scientology is fucking crazy. Well, I feel like that's why it's so important to bring awareness to this, like, right. to talk about this kind of stuff because some people just don't know. Right. Like, cults are active. Like, it's, it's, hap- it's, it's not Today, something baby. that happened. I said today, baby. Like Scientology is still going right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like you think sometimes when I think about cults, I'm like, oh yeah, like back in like the 50s or the yeah. 80s or even the 90s. No, no, they're happening today. Scientology is still thriving, and the the last cult I'm going to tell you about today was two years ago, and it's still like running. Oh. Okay. Celebrities. Scientology has attracted a number of high profile celebrities, including Tom Cruise and John Travolta. The involvement of these celebrities has brought significant media attention to the church. Could of you course. imagine if they left Scientology? I mean, it's probably yeah. not possible, but like, wow. Yeah. They would be losing their shit. Yeah, literally. I bet they'd probably like kill them before they would be able to get out. 
Yeah, I mean, if other celebrities have been able to get out, but not this high profile. Yeah, like yeah. Leah Remini, she was not as high profile as Tom Cruise, but she is still a high profile. So, I mean, she's on many things. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shut up now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, just, I took it as like you don't know anything about Leah Remini. I have Remini. no idea who that is. You, you looked it up. I don't, she doesn't look familiar. Oh. Scientology I'll look remains, her up again, though. I don't know. <laughs> Scientology remains a highly polarizing subject. Supporters view it as legitimate and beneficial spiritual practice, while critics view it as dangerous cult with a manipulative and exploitative, exploitative pro- practice. So I'm saying, like, who are these supporters? Do they mean members? Yeah. Because I can't imagine people who are non-members be supportive. being supportive of something that's clearly a cult. Right. Like, neutral. You know what I mean? Okay, that was the end of Scientology. There's a lot more on that. If you guys want to hear a deep dive, we can do a deep dive. Do you want me to talk about mine real quick? Sure. Or before you get into yours? I have... Let me see how many more I have. Four more. <laughs> well, I was just telling Kelsey, like, I, I... Look, I'm really bad at regurgitating details. I'll listen to something today, an episode, and I can't even tell you everything about it. But basically, I was learning about this cult called Teal Swan, and... Um, it was this girl who talks about how every mental illness can be traced back to a trauma. And her thing was, you need to learn what that trauma is to then heal from it and you'll be healed of your mental illness, which again, sounds wonderful. Right. However, there's no based, scientific based proof. Based some truth. Yeah. I mean, sure. And, and some, of some is, some mental health does stem from trauma. Not all right. though. Um, but her thing was every mental illness can stem back to trauma and guess what? Only she could help you. Mm-hmm. And so she would, um, help members with repressed memories, which actually I learned today that your brain is more likely to create a fake memory than to have repressed memories. Your brain doesn't naturally do that. Like it doesn't normally repress memories. Wow, that's insane. So if you if you think like basically her point was saying like you're you've been traumatized, so your brain's trying to protect you, which is true. Mm -hmm. However, that's not always the case. And so when she was having these interviews with the members who paid to see her, who paid thousands of dollars to see her. When they couldn't, like, tell her these repressed memories, she would start feeding them information like, oh, you were sexually abused at the age of seven by your uncle, right? And it's like, oh, yeah, I was. And then they just Mm – and she would be in there for, like, hours. Like, again, interrogation style to the point where, like, they just wanted to go – Yeah, they just wanted to go home. They'll They'll believe anything she says. They'll just agree with whatever she wanted to say. And so her thing was, here are the courses, kind of like Scientology, and pay me, and only I can help you heal through that. And then what's fucked up with her is that she had a belief of like, you need to either heal yourself through my courses or you can commit suicide. And that's a reset button. Mm -hmm. And some of her followers did commit suicide. Insane. Crazy. That's the one I was talking about where I said, I can't believe that she can sleep at night knowing that she made people kill themselves, thinking that they were going to reset their lives. Well, not even just kill themselves to kill themselves. Um, the specific girl that they talked about, she was like, "Well, that girl had a uh, suicidal ideation before I came into the picture, anyway." So, like, okay, that but was... you encouraged her and made her believe that it was a reset that she was going to be better. Yep. Oh, I can't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Crazy. All right, is that all you have on that one? I'm pretty sure it's. St- oh, she started out on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure it's still going on. Like, it's obviously uh, evolved since what I'm talking about. But no, it's still happening. Oh, Teal Swan. That's crazy. I need to look into that one. All right. Next one is Children of God. This is also known as the Family International. Do you know about this one? I don't think so. Okay. Um, it is a controversial and unconventional Ooh, cool chill. religious movement founded by David Berg, also known as Moses David. In the late 1960s. Here are some key points about the group. I'm a little chilly. (laughs) Origins. The Children of God was founded by David Berg in 1968. Initially, it started as a Christian evangelical group with a focus on countercultural outreach, particularly targeting young people and the hippie movement. Sounds great. Yeah. The group has undergone several name changes over the years. It was known as Children of God until 1994, when it was renamed the Family International to distance itself from past controversies. Controversies. (laughs) The rebranding, man. It's giving, running away from its problems. Mm -hmm. In recent, sorry, 
Uh, in recent years, it has also been known as the family or the family project. That When you say the family, it does kind of sound familiar, but maybe I'm just thinking about like a mafia. Yeah. A mafia family. Maybe. <laughs> the group initially promoted a mix of Christian fundamentalism and apocalyptic beliefs. Oh, no. It, <laughs> it emphasized a charismatic and evangelical approach and often used unconventional methods to spread its message. I feel like that would get me. Like end of the world. Uh, uh, what's, what's the word again? Apocalyptic Apoc- beliefs. <laughs> Hypolipic. Hypo- <laughs> Apocalyptic. Like think about it. The, there are a lot of things happening in today's day and age where even me myself, like I can't think too much about it because I'll just spiral. spiral. Yeah. And I feel like that, if any cult's going to get me, that would get me. Yeah. Ugh. And especially like, these people, you're surrounded by people who have the same beliefs as you. Right. Confirmation just, bias. So you're just full of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just reinforcing it. Yeah. All right. Here's where it gets really bad. One of the most controversial aspects of the children of God was its teachings of sexuality. The group practiced, quote, <gasps> I have heard of this. Is this, okay, they have videos of them in the room and they're all like naked and they're, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, I know, okay. Yeah, the yeah. group practiced, quote, flirty fishing, a method where female members were encouraged to use sex to convert new members. This practice was justified by Berg as a flirty way to fishing. win souls, but it faced significant criticism and controversy, obviously. <sighs> Um, members of children of God lived in communal settings and were expected to adhere to strict rules. This included communal sharings of resources and living arrangements designed to strengthen group cohesion and control. Abuse allegations. The group has been widely criticized for its practices related to sexual exploitation, including child sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Many former members have reported abuse and exploitation during their time in the group. Lots of people have come forward who are children in the children of God group. And were sexually assaulted. That is awful. The group faced numerous legal action. Oh, and there's something. I don't know if we're going to talk about it or not, but they had like a publication that would come out every so often. I forgot what it was called. Hopefully they'll talk about it. But there was like a book or something that they would publish that they would publish. And it would be like sex crazed, like to the members or to the public, to the members. And it would be like comics of like, like, um, what's it called like pr- promiscuity, promiscuity, and like, mm. and they would like give it to children. Mm. Um, okay, legal issues. The group faced numerous legal challenges and investigations over allegations of child abuse, exploitation, and other criminal activities. These controversies have led to legal actions in various countries. Damn. The Children of God received significant media attention and public scrutiny, particularly during the 70s and 80s. The group's controversial practices and beliefs were often highlighted in news reports and documentaries. In response to past controversies, the Family International has undergone significant changes. The group has publicly renounced some of its earlier practices and reformed its teachings. It now presents itself as a more mainstream Christian organization, although it continues to face scrutiny and criticism from former members and observers. Despite the changes, the group still exists and operates in various countries and maintains a presence through various outreach programs and online platforms. There was also something about the leader, David Berg, being like the all-knowing you know, and would have like multiple women having sex with him every night. Like he would pick and choose who he wanted to have sex with every night and they just had to do it. Next cult is Heaven's Gate, which you mentioned earlier. Um, This is like one of the most infamous ones because the beliefs are so far gone. Heaven's Gate was a new religious movement led by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, known for its tragic mass mass suicide in 1997. Here are some key points about the Heaven's 1997? Gate 1997? Mm-hmm. That was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. I was like 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 30. Heaven's Gate was founded by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles in the early, early 70s. They initially met while Applewhite was a music teacher and Nettles was a nurse. Wow. Totally normal people. Yeah, same. They became partners in what they described as a spiritual mission. The cult combined elements of Christianity with new age and science fiction ideas. Oh, science fiction for sure. (laughs) Followers believed that they were living in the end of times and that earth was a testing ground for their souls. They taught that the only way to ascend to a higher level of existence was to leave their physical bodies behind. 
The next level. Members believed in reaching a higher state of existence called the next level by shedding their human bodies. They thought that they could achieve this by leaving Earth aboard an extraterrestrial spacecraft. An extraterrestrial spacecraft. A central belief of Heaven's Gate was that an extraterrestrial spacecraft was following the hale Bop comet and that this spacecraft would take them to the next level. The group saw the comet as a signal for their imminent ascension. So that was like doomsday, right? Mm. When the comet was going to be passing, that was the day that they had to leave their bodies so that they could ascend. Heaven's Gate members lived a highly ascetic, ascetic lifestyle. Ecstatic? A-S-C-E-T-I-C. Hmm. Wow. Never heard that word. They adhered to strict rules about dress, diet, behavior, aiming to detach themselves from earthly attachments and desires. If you look up pictures, they're like all wearing the same clothes, like plain shirt, plain pants, same white shoes. Oh, that's so trippy. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Members practiced celibacy and adopted gender neutral roles. They believed that their physical bodies were merely vessels to be discarded in their quest for ascension. Again, to me, that sounds... Like, yeah, of course, my body is just a a meat vessel Mm -hmm. and I want to be a better person and I want to, like, my soul is what matters. Right. I, I, that all makes sense. The basis of that makes sense. The basis of it. Spaceships. Dude. And killing yourself. Dude. Um. Anything to do with, like, this whole, like, the suicide thing, I don't get, like, I, I don't, I don't get how they get them there. How did we get from point A to point B? It's 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 a total loss of reality. Mm-hmm. Total loss of self. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh. So mass suicide on March 26, 1997, 39 members of Heaven's Gate committed mass suicide in Rancho Santa Fe, California. The group believed that their suicides would allow their souls to ascend to the spacecraft trailing the Haley Bop comet. The members died by ingesting a mixture of phenobarbital, a sedative. And applesauce, followed by drinking a lethal amount of vodka. How? What's considered a lethal amount of vodka? For real, what? Can you Google that? Yeah. <laughs> the group had meticulously planned the event with detailed instructions and preparations. I want to know what, how do we know what a lethal amount of vodka is? Okay, before that though, you're preparing to kill yourself. That's like, yeah. and I'm sure this was like hours that yeah. it took. So or longer or days. Yeah. If, if you were waiting for a comet, who knows how, how long they were waiting for it. But again, it we're not in those shoes, but it it makes it easier when you've isolated these people, mm-hmm. when you've othered them, yep. and they're just surrounded by people who have the same mentality. Right. Almost like fo- fully I do again as well. Yeah. I bet some people think differently, but scared like they're just terrified of questioning or yeah oh god um twenty four shots damn approximately twenty four shots of vodka would be nearly equivalent to the three hundred and thirty gram median lethal dose of alcohol wow twenty four shots how can you shots. How could you physically be able to make your body take yeah, that much alcohol? Yeah, I would be throwing the fuck up. Yeah, I'd throw up or I'd pass out before I got to it all. That's interesting. Okay. Mm. The bodies were discovered by police after a tip-off. The discovery shocked the public and led to widespread media coverage. The mass suicide was widely covered in the media and led to significant public and academic interest in the psychology of cults and the dynamics of group behavior. The event highlighted the dangers of extreme belief systems and the susceptibility of individuals to charismatic leaders. It also sparked discussions on the intersection of religion, mental health, cult, and dynamics. Again, Um, extreme beliefs. The the core or even some of the pillars of these beliefs are like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I can, I can get behind that. Right. But when you take it to the extreme, yeah. when it's apocalyptical, mm-hmm. when you have to kill yourself, when you have to give up all your money, when you have to literally confess to things that are probably not true. Yeah. Like not talk to your family. <sighs> yeah. So 
I think a lot, I think it's kind of like a blueprint for cults to be like, okay, we have to start with a core thing that everyone wants that is not crazy. Enticing, yeah. It's very enticing that will draw people in that will sound like a great idea and that is not crazy. That doesn't seem crazy. And then once we have them in, we're going to take it up a notch. And then another notch and then another notch and just keep taking it up a notch. Yeah. And all the new followers are going to have to see this little baseline, Mm non-crazy. And then we take it up a notch. The cult that we learned about and something was wrong with the girl named Jubilee. um, I mean, there's a lot going on. And she, like, not necessarily was in denial, but she didn't realize that she was in a cult. Yeah. And she was talking about how she married this man, or she was about to marry this man. She had this boyfriend. I don't even remember what his name is. Insignificant. But anyways, um, they were in church. She did marry him. She had to divorce him. No, I know. But before they got married... Uh, the preacher had said something like, oh, your God is going to give you Jubilee or something like that. Yeah. And he goes, oh, that's my girlfriend's name. Yeah. And so because of this, because it was prophesied, pr- pr- prophesized, prophesied, prophesied, <laughs> because it was prophesized that he was going to marry her. She took it as like, oh, my God, it's like God's word, God's word that we're going to get married. It's and for to be and for so long, like after they got married, he would abuse her. And she just kept thinking back to that moment of like, well, this is okayed by god like god wanted me to be married to this yeah, man so i just have to stick it out yeah horrible yeah great story like I'm, I'm so glad she told her story because that's it's a i think a lot of people will be able to relate to it relate to it yeah sorry yeah, words like, are escaping me going with this um okay what'd you forget to say or what now kendra asked for a, a shout out so shout out kendra shout out kendra <laughs> she was talking i was talking on the phone with her right before we started recording she was like okay well give me a shout out Goodbye. <laughs> nice. I was also going to say something else about the podcast and shouting out, but I don't remember. A person you thought. Oh, no. I remember now, and it was not about <laughs> shouting out. Oh. What was it? I was going to say that I've been feeling a little sad to the point where, like, I feel physically sick, like, ill. Okay. Because my, what would have been my first year wedding anniversary is coming mm-hmm. up. It'll be the Monday before this comes out. So by the time this comes out, it would have already been. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just crazy to think what my life was like a year ago, you know? Yeah. Like, what were you doing at this time a year ago? Or not? <laughs> well, I probably would have been getting ready for work because it was a Thursday. It would, be, it would be a Thursday. Oh, yeah. The 7th would well, have been a Thursday. Last year was a, this year was a leap year. Yeah. So maybe not Thursday. No, it is Thursday. Okay. I, I know because the ninth was a Saturday. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Thursday. So just getting ready for bed. Mm. Thinking that in two days I was gonna get married to the love of my life where we would stay married forever. Yep. And little did I know. Well, too bad he died. <laughs> just kidding. Big rip. Big rip. <laughs> to the marriage. <laughs> to the marriage. Yeah. Okay. You know how there's a best man oh yeah there was a worse man yeah at that wedding yeah so it was the groom and it was the groom (laughs) that was a meme that we shared recently big rip (laughs) it was like they should have a worse man at the wedding too and then somebody commented they do sometimes there is sometimes there isn't it's usually the groom (laughs) the groom yeah i'm gonna post that on my stories (laughs) that's a good one that's a good one i'm not gonna say anything i'm just gonna post it i said it as if i've never heard it before and i sent it to you (laughs) Well, because I, at first, guys, I struggle between, like, putting all my business out there yeah. and, like, really telling people how it is. But I'm like, you know what? I got nothing to prove. To yeah. who? Like, the closest people know. It's not going to, like, make you feel better, probably. And it's not. And I'm probably going to post it and then probably delete it later. So, yeah. whatevs. But I'll post that on my story, though. That's and, a good one. And I'll just be... In honor of. Mm-hmm. And then maybe some funeral type stuff big rip big rip (laughs) big rip to that okay so the last one i want to talk about which is the one that i figured that angelica didn't know is called love has won that's the name of the cult and the leader called herself mother god okay i have heard of this i think i told you about it well i also listened to a podcast about it but i think i heard the podcast after you told me about it oh okay and it's very confusing so i'm so glad you're bringing it up 
it is confusing. I think the most confusing part is the beliefs because she's kind of all over the place with what she believes. Um, and when people question her, she will just say something else. Like she will just respond in a way that's like, okay, you just like pulled that out of your ass. Literally, like it yeah. doesn't track with anything else that you've said. Um, she was on Dr. Phil. Her Dr. Phil special is very, very interesting. Oh my God. Um, and there's a documentary on Max about the entire thing. And like actual footage from like members recording stuff. And, yeah. Okay. Love Has Won was a controversial, should say is, because I think it's still going. Was this a lot through Zoom or like live? Live streams? Live streams, yes. Okay, that's what I remember. Um, was a controversial religious group founded by Amy Carlson known as Mother God. And centered around... Such a weird name. Yeah. So, Amy Carlson. <laughs> Mother God. Mother God. <laughs> yeah. And centered around New Age beliefs. The group gained notoriety for its unusual practices and tragic events. Here are some key points about Love Has Won. The founder, Amy Carlson, claimed to be a divine figure known as Mother God. Carlson presented herself as a celestial being with a mission to bring spiritual enlightenment and healing. So something that they talked about a lot in the Dr. Phil special was that she claimed to be Jesus herself. His, is that what the special is about? Is who, like, who is she? And she's on it. Like Dr. Phil's interviewing her over Skype. But what are they, what are they talking about? The cult? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Does and she like, admit that it's a cult? No. She okay. says they're not a cult. She, I mean, of course she like yeah, makes yeah. excuses for everything that Dr. Phil brings up to her, but he confronts her about everything about abuse, about her beliefs um, there are two of her like most devout followers that are also on it and he confronts them about a bunch of stuff. And oh, of course God. they're like, no, that's taken out of context and blah, blah, blah. It's crazy. Everything's taken out of context. Yeah. But it, you should watch it. It's really good. There's okay. an hour long um, YouTube video. That's the two parts. Cause it was in two separate episodes. Um, but so she says things like she thinks that she's Jesus. Like she remembers being crucified. Oh my God. Um, that she's lived thousands of years Ugh. and she's lived, three four like 300 and something lives give me a break um she believes that she can do spiritual surgery oh my God. she can like spiritually remove someone's brain take a tumor out and then replace the brain to heal them see that again we've talked about it being so dangerous but that's dangerous like your health yeah Oh my God. People like she made people believe and she makes her members believe that she can truly heal them because she's God. Oh my God. And, um, a lot of what we're going to talk about is her own health decline. Well, and then they, sorry. And then they'll say like, oh, well, Jesus didn't believe or people around Jesus didn't believe at first that he was the Messiah or that mm -hmm. he was the savior or the son yeah. of God. Yeah. So yeah, of course I'm going to have my doubters and haters right. and non-believers. Yep. Um, yeah, haters and non-believers, that's a big thing with cults. Like, oh, they're just haters. They're just non-believers. I hate hating from not the club. You can't even get in. <laughs> you say that so much. I really do. <laughs> I said that one time because she, <laughs> she was talking shit about that, like, updated her house or something. These are her coworkers. Yeah, and, like, she added some unnecessary addition to the house, which I love that for her. Like, if yeah. she has the money for it, why not? Right. And He's like, oh my God, how much did you spend? Like eight thousand dollars. That was so unnecessary. I'm like, why are you hating from outside the club? You can't even get in. Like, girl, shut the fuck up. Don't be mad. You can't do it. Yeah, like, girl, calm down. I love you, girl. <laughs> so, they don't listen. <laughs> yeah. Um, bleep those out. <laughs> okay, I'll bleep their names. Bleep. Uh, <laughs> I just bleep it after the name is said. <laughs> just put two bleeps here. <laughs> bleep, bleep. Yeah. Okay, good. My job's done. Um. So, yeah, so crazy beliefs like that. She thinks she can heal people. She makes people believe that she can heal people. You're talking about her own decline. Yes, we will be talking about her own health decline, which is ironic because she can heal people. Right. So why cannot she, why cannot why? she heal herself? <laughs> why cannot she heal herself? Um, why cannot, why, <laughs> why can't she heal herself? How come that makes sense? I'm going to take her thumbnail, you wrapped up in your blanket, and me just cracking up over here wait why cannot she heal herself why does that not make sense but why can't she heal herself make sense <laughs> you're right it's just the 
it's just the uh what's it called <laughs> contraction yeah why cannot she heal herself that's that's correct <laughs> that is correct yeah <laughs> why, why cannot she... she heal herself you just sound funny saying it <laughs> Okay. Anyway, all right. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm trying to get myself <laughs> to stop smiling. Wait, did, I, did I send you the Adele video? No. Can we watch? Can we watch it real quick? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Real, real, real uh, quick. Real no. quick. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We need to calm down. We're getting slap happy. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to clear my smile. Well, because we went. <laughs> okay. The Great Awakening. Oh, I was waiting for you to do it again. <laughs> Members believed in a coming, in a coming. <laughs> Members believed in a coming Great Awakening, a transformative event. Are you that- coming? Yeah, to my senses, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> a transformative event that would usher in a new era of spiritual enlightenment and harmony. So they again, s- yeah, apocalyptical. Yep. The end is near. The- they saw Carlson as a key figure in the process. The group incorporated themes of cosmic and extraterrestrial influences into their teachings, including beliefs about being in contact with higher dimensional beings. Okay, let's mm. talk about that. So she believed that there were, I mean, she called them something different every time. Angels, beings, mm. spirit, spirits, whatever. Some people really do think that aliens are angels. Yeah. And that they were guiding her to wherever she was going to be ascended to. And whenever she was ascended, then she would be removing pain and suffering from all humans on Earth. So she's saving people on Earth. You know how she could have really flipped this for her own benefit is that any sickness that she took out of someone's body, she puts it in her body. And that's why her body. And maybe she did tell some people that, but she always changed her story. Um, and I think the main reason she always had to change her story was because she was a drunk. I was going to say, yeah, wasn't she, she got like liver cancer or something, right? Oh, worse than that. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So she's another, doing this to herself. another thing I wanted to mention of her, her spiritual, um, guide, her spiritual guides, were people like Robin Williams and Marilyn Monroe. Oh, girl. And she would just call them by their first names. Like, she just knew them. Like, oh, yeah, Robin oh, told yeah. me. Robin came to me and said, yeah. Girl, you lost me. Um, uh, by blending these concepts with her own self-proclaimed divinity, she created a framework that resonated with people seeking spiritual meaning. She claimed to have a direct connection to higher spiritual realms and to possess a unique spiritual insights and abilities. This included assertions of being a divine being sent to guide humanity. Carlson and her followers often spoke about her receiving special visions or messages from higher spiritual entities. These experiences were framed as evidence of her divine rule and connection. She made prophetic statements and predictions about the future, presenting herself as having special knowledge about cosmic events and spiritual revelations. The group engaged in various rituals and ceremonies that reinforced Carlson's role as a defined figure. These rituals often included meditation, prayer, and other spiritual practices designed to elevate her status in the eyes of her followers. Carlson used religious and spiritual imagery to create a sense of sacredness around her persona. This included visual symbols and references to divine and mythical features. Figures. <laughs> <laughs> like many cult le- leaders, Carlson used psychological manipulation to control her followers. This included techniques techniques to isolate them from outside influences, foster dependence on her, and reinforce her authority. So yeah, she tried to she had to make people shun the other people in their lives. She appealed to the emotional and psychological needs of her followers, providing them with a sense of purpose and belonging. The emotional connection made it easier for her to convince them of her her divine status. Um, So there was a story on, I don't know if they're going to talk about this or not, so I'm going to tell it now. There was a story on Dr. Phil, uh, a wife came forward of a a previous member. Hmm. She Was Was she in the cult? No. Okay. She was like... See, that's weird too. Yeah, so like... I don't I don't know how to explain this backstory, so it's, it's going to sound really weird, but it's not the point of the story. So the wife was like, my husband one day, he found this group online, and he was just so drawn by their purpose and wanted to go on the spiritual journey. 
or the spiritual mission. So he went to join them and he was going to be gone for the spiritual mission or whatever. And then he was going to come back. They had kids. They were like wife and kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess one night the wife and husband agreed that he was going to call to talk to their son before he went to bed. And the husband didn't. He didn't call. So the wife knew something was wrong. And like the next day, um, his sister, the husband's sister, got a call from him saying, um, yeah, I need to leave. This isn't what I signed up for, but I have to walk to the airport. And the airport was a three hour drive away and he was walking and they're out in the mountains. Oh God. Um, and they didn't hear from him again after that. <gasps> so they called the authorities to go find him because they thought that he was in danger and like this cult had harmed him. And he was found in the mountains, still alive, but walking around confused <gasps> in a daze and naked. What? And by the time they found him, he was so, like, they think that they drugged him, basically. He was so confused that he thought he ascended. <gasps> Oh, my God. And when he got to the hospital and the people at the hospital already knew his name, he thought that was, like, proof that he had ascended. Like, people know who he is. Like, he's some profound... He's on another level. Mm -hmm. (gasps) So he had to deconstruct from that. He wasn't even in the Dr. Phil special. His wife spoke on his behalf. And so (sighs) the the theory is that because he tried to leave, they took him out to the mountains, drugged him, stripped him naked, and left him to the elements. Yeah. So imagine if he hadn't called his sister. Right. If people weren't accountable for him. Yeah. If people weren't aware. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Which is exactly what they want. Right. Isolation. Isolation. Um, no one's coming for you. Hmm. Living arrangements. Members of Love Has One lived in communal settings, off, often referred to as healing centers. These locations were intended to be places of spiritual work and community living. You know, that that's something that draws a lot of people, too, is, like, mm-hmm. wanting to live... Like the Jubilee story where mm-hmm. she talked about how like she had to like rent out this house. I was like, in a really, really bad neighborhood, but the rent was super low. And then another time where she was like babysitting someone like it's almost like their living arrangements is not a big worry for them. Like they'll just yeah. figure it out right. or the cult will figure it out for them. And right. I'm, because like, their purpose is more. Yeah. I'm like, that's important. not. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm trying not to be insensitive, but it is crazy. Yeah. Uh, The group engaged in various ceremonies and rituals, many of which were focused on spiritual healing and ascension. These practices often involved meditation, prayer, and other New Age techniques. Um, They maintained a presence online where they shared their techniques and updates about their activities. Carlson often communicated with followers through social media and live stream events. Mm -hmm. So they they would actually get on these live stream events and collect money from followers. And like she would do these healings for money. Uh, criticism and abuse allegations. Love has one faced criticism and legal issues related to allegations of abuse and exploitation. Former members and critics reported instances of emotional and psychological manipulation as well as concerned about concerns about the group's treatment of individuals. They kind of talked about like sleep deprivation. There's a lot of like verbal abuse. Um, I'm not sure about physical abuse though. Yeah, there's like videos of her like talking so badly to yeah. her members. Calling people whores and mm. yeah. Yelling at them. And- yep. So at some point in this journey, I think she had the cult for like 14 years or something like that. Very long time. Oh my God. I don't know the exact time frame for about 14 years. So that's what they talked about. Dr. Phil in 2018, she found a guy that she fell in love with and he became father God, but still second to her. Okay. By the time she was on Dr. Phil, she claimed that she was paralyzed that she she took away so much pain and suffering from people that she had become paralyzed and that she had to like live in a bed people had to take her to the shower like no one could confirm if she was actually oh, paralyzed oh right 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 which is probably not true might not be true she might have been able to use her legs but she wanted people to cater to her ew yeah <laughs> ew so she she talked a lot about being sick and being in pain which was her reasoning for drinking so much alcohol i mean she was a raging alcoholic and so was father god obviously but they took it as like spiritual whatever they always made excuses for everything right um 
Another thing that she did was she ingested colloidal silver. And I don't know the exact, um, what, what this exactly is, but some people believe that it has health benefits, but it actually will kill you. Like it, it will do more than kill you. It'll turn your skin blue. <gasps> yes. But you said it has health benefits? People think it has health benefits, but it, but it doesn't. Oh my God. And so she thought that it was going to heal her. So she was like taking it every day. And? Well, we'll get there. Oh. <laughs> and? and? <laughs> You're like on the edge what of your seat. Happened? <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is a, a section called Amy Carlson's Use of Colloidal Silver Age. Oh, no. no. Where do you even get this stuff? I don't remember. I think they were getting off like eBay or something. Like it's not illegal. You can buy it, but you can't, you're not supposed to ingest it. What are you buying it for? What's its purpose? I don't know. You want to look it up really quick? Colloidal? Colloidal. C-O-L-L-O-I-D-A-L. Colloidal... Silver consists of tiny silver particles in a liquid. It is sometimes promoted on the internet as a dietary supplement. Mm -hmm. However, evidence supporting health-related claims is lacking. Is it safe? The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has warned that colloidal silver isn't safe or effective for treating any disease or condition. Additionally, the FDA and the Federal Trade Commission have taken actions against a number of companies for making misleading claims about colloidal silver products. Wow. It can cause silver... It can cause serious side effects. The most common is argyria. Mm -hmm. Argyria. Where silver accumulates in the skin and other tissues leading to permanent bluish gray discoloration. Permanent. We're going to get to that. Okay. So she promoted the ingestion of colloidal silver as a part of their health and spiritual regimen. Carlson and her followers believe that consuming colloidal silver could aid in achieving spiritual enlightenment and physical well-being. The use of silver can pose significant health risk. Prolonged ingestion of colloidal silver can lead to a condition called angria. Argria. I know. I'm like, how do you pronounce leading that? Leading to permanent bluish gray discoloration. It can permanent? also. Yes. It can... I am blue. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm blue. If I was green, I would die. If I was green. I... And, and those words? I think so. All right. It can also cause other health problems, including kidney damage and neurological issues. Of course, it can cause kidney damage. Your body can't, yeah, like separate it and uh, waste filter it, filter it, yeah, yeah. But I wonder what gave her the idea to even take them in the first place. I don't know. She makes shit up, so mm. she probably was like, "Oh, that'll heal me." What if someone else scammed her? That'd be crazy. <laughs> the promotion of colloidal sil- silver by Carlson and her group was controversial due to the lack of scientific support for its efficiency and the potential health risk associated with its use. Critics argued that promoting such unproven potential harmful substance was a part of a broader pattern of questionable practices within the group. Okay, so before we get to the next part, which is like the biggest part of this whole story, she also had three children that she abandoned... <gasps> To go on this mission of enlightenment <gasps> to save the world. Abandon them with who? Her mother and her sister. Okay, yeah, I don't remember this part. Her mother and her sister raised her three children. Oh my God. Because she left him. And Dr. Phil confronted her about <gasps> that. She was like, you call yourself Mother God, but you abandoned your three children. Can you tell me about that? And she's like, I didn't abandon them. I left them with their father. Left. You left them. That's abandonment. Because I had a higher, I had a higher calling. And I had to, I was called to... To save the world or Question. whatever. Did she have these kids before starting the cult? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think the uh, oldest, that's not make it I okay. I think the I'm oldest one saying. was like 11. Oh, is this your, what is this? Who is this? this? Not me. Is this Bowen? Yeah, it's Bowen. Oh, hi, baby. Who is this? What is this? <laughs> okay. So wow. it's about to get crazy. Okay. Make As sure. if it wasn't already. I know. Make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. I guess we can always come back to it. Okay. So this is a timeline that I wrote out myself because I watched the end of the documentary while I was at work and write, wrote out the stuff. Okay, so in April 2021, the, quote, Galactics told Mom that they needed to move her to Oregon from Colorado so that they could come get her and so that she could ascend. Okay? Okay. They're currently in Colorado and they're going to Oregon so that she could ascend. Yeah. And the Galactics told her this, like, I don't know, Robin Williams or something. <laughs> They put her in the back of a minivan, barely able to move, and drove to Oregon from Colorado. So by this point, she's very sick. 
Okay. Maybe she was, um, well, she's got alcohol abuse and she's ingesting silver. So maybe she is paralyzed, honestly. At this point, I think she is paralyzed. Um, they show footage of them wheeling her into the hotel room and you can see that she is just barely hanging on, barely alive. Like she looks, she's blue. Ugh. She, her skin is fully I gotta blue. I got look at pictures. Wait, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Wait. But wait. Here's I'll one. tell you when. I'll okay. tell you when. All right. All right. She, in the, when she's in the wheelchair, I mean, it's a video on the documentary. You can see her. She's fully blue. She looks like she's barely hanging on. She's skin Ew. and bones. Ew. It's it's bad. Wait, is her husband still alive? Or He's reasons? the one wheeling her into the hotel room. Does he look as bad? He's not taking the silver. Only she is. Oh. Okay, go ahead. But he's also alcoholic, though. Okay. And he is way more office rocker than she was like the sorry the (laughs) the way he just like acted in interviews like he would just like just do weird shit you just have to see okay they say that she rotated from the bath to the bed to the chair because all the energy she was producing had nowhere to go since her body was dying She's Mother God. She's producing energy for everyone in the on the earth. Wait, so if she's really sickly and dying, how does she have energy? They think that she has spiritual energy that is... But, like, logistically, how? There's no logistics in this. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. Okay. She ends up dying that night. She took her last breath. How did breath. she know? Well, she's sick. She, she knows she's... But, like, that day, the same day they wheel her into the Mm -hmm. hotel? I believe so, yes. So, she dies that night. They describe her taking her last breath. But they they describe that she still took breaths and water and was warm for three days after. Which I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe she fell into a coma. Maybe. They think this is a resurrection. They're even reading electromagnetic frequencies coming off of her body to prove what the that fuck? she is still Mother God and she is still putting off the same energy. They literally show in the video, they're holding like a device like this, like up to her foot and showing the electromagnetic frequencies. And then to her hand and then to her head. It's really weird. Ew. The hotel staff get worried about her and try to enter the room. Probably sus because she looked damn near dead when she arrived. Hell Yeah. But they wouldn't let her into the room. <gasps> That's a lawsuit on their hands. So father decides that they need to go to the woods because mother's mother believed that the starship will come to get her there so that she can ascend. So they go camping in the woods and they take the body with them. Ah, oh, God. And father sleeps next to her in a tent. Uh, uh. They stay there for days, maybe weeks. I don't know. They don't really talk about how long they were there. But it was a while. This blanket smells good. Then at some point they figure out. It smells like a baby. <laughs> Have you watched it yet? No. No. I at probably some, should. At some point, they figure out that it's not going to happen here and they need to go back to Colorado. What? So they've basically come to Oregon for no reason. Well, for so she can die. Well, but because they thought she was the... going to ascend and yeah. she didn't. Well, because she, okay. <laughs> I mean, there's videos of them out camping. They're like, come get mom. Come get her. They're yeah. yelling. Yes. Um, father claims. She's dead at this point, right? Yes. Completely dead. Yes. Father claims mother shows him that they need to leave Wait. and go back to Colorado. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. What did she tell them was going to happen to her body? Like, how, like her I spirit? I think they thought that her body was going to ascend as well. Like, they were oh. going to watch her ascend. Oh, my God. Like some, like Jesus, basically. Wow, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, they cross five state lines with her dead body to bring her back home. What the actual fuck? Which is highly illegal, if you didn't know. Oh, my God, Yes. Um, when they arrive home, they encounter Michael, who had been draining the bank account of three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. So Michael is one of the members of the cult, and good for you, Michael. Get all that shit. He was. He was. In, oh, he does more stuff. He was important because he was the one who was in charge of all the money and all the assets were in his name. So like the house was in his name, like the house they're coming back to in Colorado oh, wow. was in his name. Probably the vehicles were in his name. Like he got good credit or he, something. Yeah. He's got good credit <laughs> or something like that. It was safe to put his name on the assets. Okay. Um, and who is this? Just a, his name is Michael. He's just one of the followers. Oh. I think he had like some kind of history with Amy Carlson before the cult. Maybe. Okay. Um, I didn't really look too much into him because he's not a huge part of the story, but okay. he did drain the bank account of three hundred, three hundred thirty wow. thousand dollars. Why did he spend that on? Who knows? Probably to get away, the fuck away from there. Oh, that's crazy. Michael handles the money and assets and everything in his name, so I believe this was legal that he removed the money from the account. 
Michael sees mom's body and gets scared and calls the police. Because he didn't know she died until he, they come home and he sees her. Dude, this is like what? A week after she passed? Weeks. Weeks? Mm-hmm. <gasps> Weeks had passed by this Could point. Could you fucking imagine? What she looks like? What she smells like. You don't have to imagine what she looks like because there's pictures. Oh, I think I have some of the pictures, actually. Police come Dude, to the what house. The fuck? <clears throat> Police come to the house and find mummified, mom mummified, no. and enshrined no. queen size bed <gasps> no. wrapped in a sleeping bag. No. Decorated with Christmas lights. Uh what? <laughs> Not the it's Christmas a shrine. <laughs> Not the Christmas lights. We're in Christmas. <laughs> as the police enter, uh as the police officer's body cam gets closer to the bed, oh, his no. flashlight reveals that the corpse face is not only severely gaunt, oh. but also distinctly blue with glitter around the eye sockets. Girl. And at this point, she looks like a skeleton with blue skin. Ew. Uh, like, oh my god. Totally not a person anymore. The cause of death, alcohol abuse, anorexia, and chronic ingestion of coll- colloidal silver. So she had probably liver damage, yeah, kidney damage. Yeah. And she was anorexic, so she was malnourished. The time frame between dying in the hotel and the police finding her was several weeks. She looks like a skeleton with blue skin. That's what I wrote. (laughs) Members are originally charged with crimes related to fraud and mishandling a corpse, but they are dropped. Huh? Charges were dropped against members of the Love Has One cult for a variety of reasons, including constitutional concerns. Prosecutors told the judge they didn't think the abuse of a corpse corpse charge was constitutional in this case because they did it under religious pretenses pretenses oh defense counsel motion defense counsel moved to seal records which was granted no suspicion of foul play so they were like okay they didn't move her body because they murdered her she died like she obviously died of like whatever this was and she was ingesting those things on her own that was documented um autopsy results Yep, we already talked about that. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, the Love Has One cult was in the news before when Carlson appeared on the Dr. Phil show with family members who were concerned about the group. Some former members have accused Carlson of brainwashing and abuse. So in the um, Dr. Phil special, did she have to answer to cult members, family members that were not in the cult? Was she confronted by them? She, uh, they had them on the show at the same time. It was all over Zoom because it was like in 20, uh, tw- the beginning of 2021. Okay. It was all over Zoom, but um, I'm not sure if they had them talk directly to them or not. Okay. I ha- You'd have to watch it. I can't remember. Mm. So after mom's death and things have settled down legally, the members do a live video um, after everything settles down. They tell everyone that mom has ascended that she has lived her life's purpose, purpose that she took pain and suffering away when she left, which I'm not sure if y'all know, but there's still pain and suffering here. Um, <laughs> um, I didn't know where you were going with that. So they, I was like, they also tell everyone that Michael drained all the money from the accounts. <laughs> um, Damn Michael. They address the haters. Um, they called the world that they lived in the 5d world, which stand for fifth dimension. And that we were still living in the 3D world, which is third dimension. And yeah, I'm pretty sure they're still doing live streams. The The girls, the two girls that were on the Dr. Phil show and that do the live streams, they are so deeply embedded in this. They, they're college graduates. College graduates yep. who believe this stuff. That wow. truly believe that she was Mother God. That she was Jesus on, on the cross. That she's lived 300 and something lives. Mm-mm. that she could heal people with her spirit Mm-mm. but she was sitting here drinking her days away screaming at people calling them whores oh there was a point in which they they moved to hawaii are you looking at pictures there was a point in which they moved to hawaii and the people in hawaii like shunned them like ran them out of the state <gasps> because they were so ashamed to have them there oh, that's God. in the documentary too Let me see. That's when she starts turning blue. Yep, that's the beginning of it. That's nuts. How old is she when she when that happened? Forty eight. No, forty five. She looks ninety. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention she was forty five years old when she died. She looks fucking ninety, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh hell no. We'll post some links to. 
some photos of what she looked like if you want to see. They're mm-hmm. very disturbing, so mm-hmm. look at your own risk. Um, but I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight because this is going to be a long episode. <laughs> oh, so gross. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. If yes. there is a cult that you'd like us to do a deep dive on, we can do a full episode on. We can get really into depth. Also, let us know. if you're in a cult or have ever been in a cult, yeah. hit us up. Hit us up. Let us know. <laughs> let us let us have talk you on about the podcast. it. Yeah. We'll see y'all next week and we're out. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.